everyone. So today I am out with Ivy and we are going to be working on our stop whistle. So Ivy has a pretty decent stop whistle um, at the moment, but I've not really done much work in proofing it against distractions. Um, so that's what I'm going to start introducing now. Eventually when she's working, I want her to be able to stop to shot and stop to flush. Um, but I'm going to need to help her to get there. So I'm going to be using my stop whistle as my tool. But in order to do that, I need to make sure that it is really strong and well proofed against it. So that is what we're going to have a go at doing now. Great, you ready for so with this exercise, I'm going to be playing about with the timing of my stop whistle and the timing of a distraction. I'm also going to play about with the level of distraction and the duration the distraction is out for. So initially on that occasion, I blew the stop whistle. There was a clear pause showed me that she was nice and steady in a stop and then I threw a distraction out. She remained steady to that distraction being thrown and therefore she got rewarded for it. On that occasion there, the timing between the stop and the distraction was a lot smaller. So I blew the stop and then quickly after threw the piece of food out as a distraction. Again, she remained steady and this time I released her on to go and get that piece of food. On this occasion, you'll see that I'm playing about with some duration. So she has to remain in the stop whilst the distraction is out for longer, which makes it much harder. As things are going well and we've got quite a nice rhythm, I'm upping the ante. So I blow the stop, wait for her to clearly be stopped, and then introduce a higher level distraction, which in this occasion is the tennis ball. She stopped, and on this time I rewarded her with a piece of food thrown away from the tennis ball, so she's learning that she doesn't always get to go forward to the distraction, but sometimes she does. And then just like I did with the food, I start playing about with the timing. So on that occasion, I blew the stop whistle and then quickly threw the item. And then I mark her for remaining steady with my clicker and then throw out a reward for her. It takes her a little while to find this piece of food that was thrown out, which is absolutely fine. It's all part of the experience for her and she will enjoy this part of sticking and searching around. And then when she's ready, we start again. So stop whistle, item thrown, and on this occasion I mark it and release her to go and get the tennis ball. So I do mix up the way that she's rewarded each time. The ratio of how frequently you reward your dog with a distraction versus with another form of reinforcement really depends on your dog. Um, I would generally try and reward them more with something else so that they don't get in the habit of going after the distraction but there is no harm in letting them have it occasionally um, and for some dogs letting them have it more frequently will be absolutely fine and for others you might need to be quite careful in how often you reward them with the distraction. Just note that on the occasions that I do reward her with something other than the distraction I go and pick the distraction up just so that it takes that temptation away um, otherwise you may find that you release your dog and they go after the distraction rather than the reward that you intended. Her delivery is going to pot here for the moment but on the next repetition if you listen and look closely you'll see that I throw the tennis ball first and then blow my stop whistle. So I'm upping the ante in terms of the timing. I release her onto it and then again her delivery goes to pot here. I think I scattered some food on the floor near the camera so she keeps going over to that area. Um, so continue to encourage her and then when she brings it back I throw it immediately out and start dealing with that delivery issue. So we spent a little bit of time troubleshooting that delivery and then started again with our stop whistle. So throw, blow the stop whistle. And then on this occasion, I go and pick the ball up and reward her with a piece of food thrown in the opposite direction. Now you may have noticed there that she offered a standing stop. For me, that's absolutely fine because my criteria on the stop whistle is that she remains stationary. Other people have more specific criteria on their stop whistle and if that's the case, then you just work to the standard that you are setting with your dog. Um, for me, a standing stop is perfectly acceptable, um, which is why she was rewarded. And then we ended our session there. So hopefully that's provided a little bit of insight into one of the ways that I'm working on starting to proof my stop whistle with Ivy, playing about with our timing and levels of distraction. She was successful 100% of the time with that session, so I'm really, really pleased with that, and we will just continue to work on progressing it further.